to New Orleans. I'd go check into my guest house. Plan today, I'm gonna grab breakfast first. St. Louis Cemetery One tour starts at 9.30. charge-ups my phone a little bit, charge things, and we'll be back in the way. All right, quick pit stop, power nap, shed the backpack so my shoulders get a break now. I'm gonna head off. I think I'm gonna go check out the garden district since I'm right on the line that takes me there. Uh, to see what that's all about. I've heard it's pretty cool to see, so let's go check it out. All right, guys, I am just on kind of the outskirts of the Garden District. This is a neighborhood with like collections of a bunch of old historic uh, mansions from the southern mansions here in the United in the in the U.S. And actually, to my left, right here, is Lafayette Cemetery Number One, which is, I guess, free to get into. You can actually go in without a tour guide, unlike the one I went in earlier today. But I think it's closed right now, so I don't know if I can get another cemetery today. But <laughs> still kind of cool. So we're gonna see if we can look at some cool houses. There's a few uh, kind of landmarks to look for, but I'm just kind of winging this as we go. Thank goodness for selfie sticks. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, uh, yeah, I did just ride the rail car back there. I was gonna probably film a little more on it, but so many people, I just feel awkward doing it. Uh, do, however, get yourself a rail pass for $3, and I guess you get on and off as much as you want. That crew doesn't like me doing this. So. I'm not gonna be here long in this neighborhood, but it's fine, because the streetcars run like pretty regularly, I think all 24 hours a day. So I'm gonna hop back on here once I take a couple laps. This is probably one of the most beautiful neighborhoods I've ever seen. This is very, very cool to come down here. And I love like, it's kind of a cloudy, gloomy day, but to me, that's like perfect for this kind of thing. So I'm gonna jump back on the streetcar, and I think I'm gonna cave in and head to, uh, back to the French Quarter, see something for dinner there, and just see what's going on. This morning it was a little, because well, there was nothing going on. Like there was, I was just there for that tour, and just looking around, and it was rainy and blah, blah, but, Here's hoping it's gonna be a lot cooler tonight. So let's get back on the St. Charles Street car and head that way. All right, I'm heading back on Bourbon Street. As expected, it is like leaps and bounds cooler than it was this morning, obviously. So uh, I just gotta find something to eat. Good luck with all this. Oh, by the way, this is Monday night. Party in New Orleans, I guess, I'm set up for the weekend. Everybody, five, six,
move off Bourbon Street for a bit because I do want to go see a couple of sites uh, on the way to get something to eat. I think I know where I'm going for dinner, but see if it's open. One of the things is this is the Andrew Jackson Hotel behind me. The only reason I know what it is is because like the McElroys released like a ghost tour video and they were standing right out here talking about this. Apparently it's haunted and stuff too. Ooh. Behind me right here is, this is the Lollary Mansion. This is, uh, the, well, I guess the woman who owned it was torturing slaves and uh, shared a tour guide said she had like over a hundred slaves, but nobody knows how many because they kept disappearing. Uh, finally, when they found out it was a house fire or something, and uh, so it's, it's really hard to tell. I've been waiting a while to film because there's so many like ghost tours and tour guides like, on the streets. It's like, there's like two carriages right now. And everyone's talking, so it's like I couldn't get anything recorded, so. Oh yeah, it was also at one time owned by Nicolas Cage, but then he got in trouble with the uh, IRS and had to get rid of all that stuff. Well, if you have to advertise. Groups is full, so I'm gonna go to... Baby King's place. This place is full, this worked out great, this band is awesome. Yeah, one of the bass players played with Dr. Gunn and a bunch of other people as well, so it's pretty great to watch. There's so much energy to run the place, it's awesome. Uh, the food was all right, but it was I mean, it was really really good, really well priced. But it, you know, it was all right food. Uh, I got another pohoy again, but uh, I wasn't there for the food; I was there for the music. And I, I bet anywhere you go, it's going to be fabulous music. That was awesome. That piano player was twenty; he's twenty years old, and his dad was a bass player. Was amazing, phenomenal bass player. Played with like. Uh, Dr. John, I'm not sure if you could hear me inside when I was saying this, but Dr. John, and, uh, and because, uh, the list was just insane. So, uh, yeah, it was just, just a random Monday night. There was like that band of that caliber playing in like a random restaurant. So, all right, I'm gonna, th I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, actually. So I think I might make one more pass down Bourbon Street, uh, cause I'm a glutton for punishment, uh, and then head back to the guest house for the night and get ready for 7 a.m. train tomorrow. So, more about that when I get there. Cafe Du Monde is still hopping, but there's no line now. So hey, you want your late night beignets. It's only like 9.30, so. All right, I've arrived as a tourist in New Orleans. I finally I got somebody to finally ask me. They bet me 10 bucks, tell me where I got my shoes right now, what city state? Yeah. Laughed them off, walked away. I had to explain to the Australians who were walking right in front of me what that was and why to never take that bet. And if you don't know, look it up. So many tours in the French Quarter. It is pure chaos down here. There's bands in like every restaurant across the street, like competing for customers. Uh, is flashing lights everywhere. This is absolutely insane. I'm going to uh, remind you this is a Monday night in June. Like, there's no reason to be out celebrating, but everybody is. So, uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, St. Char uh, Charles streetcar, head back to Canal Street with two blocks up, and get on back. So, that is New Orleans in a day. Well, I got up at like 6, 6 30, whatever. Got out the door, 7 30 ish, maybe. Once I got my everything all situated and stuff, it feels like so long ago when I started with Cafe Beignet, it feels like a whole other day. Like it was just such a long, tons of things to do here in New Orleans. Um, I had a great day. I can't think of a single bad thing that, that I did. The, 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 the $10 for the, um, the tour for the cemetery was well worth it. Super cool to be in that, to be there and listen to the history and stuff. The biggest expense was obviously um, the World War II Museum, but Again, super worth it. That was so amazing. Like, it's so well done. Um, I especially love the Battle of Baston. 
uh, room where you kind of experience the battle all around you as it's happening. It was super, it was very, very cool. Oh, I guess the biggest expense would probably be the food. But you're in New Orleans. You have to, you, you've got to eat. You've got to get some good New Orleans food. Uh, I did po' boys. I didn't really branch away down to the spicy stuff so much. So people were kind of <laughs> wondering why I was coming to New Orleans if I don't eat spicy food. But anyway, yeah, it's very doable on a budget. You know, you can spend lots and lots of money here in New Orleans, or you can just go sightseeing and just people watch, I guess. Uh, but really, really great day. So tomorrow morning, we got to get up at very early and catch a seven o'clock train from the Amtrak station, about a quarter mile away or so. And it's the 7 a.m. Crescent. We'll be going up to Washington, D.C., uh, following through to New York City. And to get to D.C., it's about a 25 five hour try to double check that and see i'll know that tomorrow when we go so tonight i gotta pack repack my bags be ready to go in the morning it might be kind of a rush in the morning so you may see me then or you may not but i'll try and do something to wrap up this video good morning from new orleans it is currently about 6 25 the train leaves at 7 and I am whoa, a little less than a 10 minute walk to the station. It's light enough, I'll walk this little neighborhood here. Go to the overpass, boom. Gotta run. Go Amtrak fashion, every station is different, so no checking in here. You just have your ticket and go. So unlike, I think it was King Street Station in Seattle where you had to check in even with a ticket. So uh, I just bumped into somebody who I rode across on the Sunset Limited with. We both had the exact same impressions about about the cities. We saw a lot of the same stuff, and like some of the same live music and everything. It was, it was just, yeah, so it was a great time. Uh, New Orleans is a wonderful place to hang out and spend some time. It took a couple of days and yeah, it, we'll, we'll have a great time down here. So hopping on the Crescent and that is leaving at 7 a.m. And it is about a 26, 27, 7 hour ride to DC. I'm gonna hop off for an afternoon, that'll be pretty quick. Ooh, one more thing. This is a view liner, not a super liner. So I'm curious to see what the difference is. Super liners are two floors. I think it's the view liner, which is one floor. So let's see what that's like. Anyway, jump onto my next video. Uh, follow me on the Crescent and we'll see what we can see through the eastern half of the United States.